again, thank you for being here. We're going to we're going to talk about S bus and V bus today. And we're also going to get into how to address with these dip switches like this. And this addressing will go further than just when we're using S bus circuits. It actually will also apply to um, Hochiki devices and it'll apply to other panels outside of the Silent Night world, such as Gamewell. And I think even Notifier uses it, even though we don't work on Notifier stuff. So first, I want to address a couple differences between SBus and VBus, because a lot of people seem to get this a little bit confused on which wire you need, where you pull it to, what each one is used for, that sort of thing. And I think by starting with us understanding SBus versus VBus, what their different jobs are, how they work together and all that, that'll help us uh, help everything else as we install jobs and we pull wire on construction sites. And even as we continue this topic, if we can get clear identification of what the job of each of these are, I think that's going to help us in, in knowing what we're doing and what everything's trying to happen. So S bus and V bus, even though they sound very similar, except for that first letter, they are entirely different things. S bus is a four wire data circuit. It does digital communication. Um, and this is intelligent control between the control panel and all of its auxiliary panels, whether they're enunciators, remote microphones, power supply panels, or uh, amplifiers. This controls all the inputs, the outputs, the displays. There's some remote network cards we can use for networking between panels. All the intelligent things that happen in a silent night or Fahrenheit panel are communicated over the S bus. And it's really cool because it allows us to uh, communicate individual things. So our extra SLC loops we get on, on job sites whenever we have a loop two or loop three and so on. That's a card that's actually on the S bus. And the S bus is so intelligent that it can control entire SLC loops in addition to all of our other outputs. The V bus, on the other hand, by comparison, is incredibly stupid. All it does is carry audio message as an output. There's no input coming back in on the VBus. There's no communication back and forth. We're not controlling anything with VBus. It's just we're taking the audio source and we're sending it to the amplifiers because none of the amplifiers contain any internal audio message. So our S bus that hooks up to those amplifiers can say, hey, amplifier, activate your circuits. We're in alarm. And the amplifiers go, okay, it's activated. But if there's nothing coming across the V-Bus or there's no V-Bus hooked up, the amplifiers don't have any output to put out. They just turn circuits on and are not creating a message anywhere. So the V-Bus just takes the message that's originated at the fire alarm control panel or originated at a remote microphone and carries it down this two conductor circuit so that it goes in and out of each amplifier so that all amplifiers now have a message to amplify. The panels don't communicate or anything over this V-Bus. They don't, there's no anything else happening. It's just that low level message. And it's class B supervised, just like a, a speaker circuit or a NAC circuit is. There's an end line resistor that goes at the end. And that's the only way the panel actually knows that as you go from panel to panel to panel or amplifier to amplifier to amplifier, that's the only way your fire alarm control panel knows that your circuit is complete is if it sees that end line resistor because it's not actually talking to each of those panels. It's just sending an output and supervising for that resistor. And because of that, there's no T-tapping allowed on the V-Bus. So if, for instance, you're on a job site that you have a fire alarm control panel, a remote microphone at your enunciator, and you've got a couple amplifiers, when you pull your V-Bus over to your microphone, first of all, you have to hit your microphone first because the, the V-Bus message only travels towards the end line resistor. It doesn't travel backwards. So for instance, if you go panel, amplifier, microphone, amplifier, and then you page on that microphone, only the last amplifier on the circuit will be getting it. And the amplifier that came before the microphone will not get that message. So you start at your, uh, you start at your fire alarm control panel, you pull your wire over to your microphone, and then you pull to all the amplifiers in the building. And doing it that way lets the message travel all the way through to every amplifier and you can page from any microphone. And it doesn't, so it has to be that way because of the supervision with the end line resistor, the typical class B kind of thing. This is just a low level audio circuit and it's low level. It doesn't have enough power to drive speakers itself. So even if you only have one speaker circuit on a job, we can't just say, oh, we don't need amplifiers. We'll just power it off the V-Bus. Now, there's not enough power on the V-Bus for that. It's a low-level audio circuit, meaning it just feeds amplifiers, and then the amplifiers make it strong enough. Whereas the S-Bus, because of that intelligent communication and the addressing that it has, and it's individually communicating to each point on there, we are allowed to T-tap S-Bus because the panel will know if any of those drop out. It's not worried about an end-line resistor. It's worried about individual communication.
So that's a, a huge look at how the S bus and V bus work together and differently. So here I'll get in a little bit more into the S bus. So the S bus we use a four conductor wire for. Typically we try to pull it with a white jacket unless the specifications on the job don't allow that. Uh, it doesn't need to be shielded. We just do 18-4. And these are the four terminals we have for S bus. There's negative, positive, A, and B. Now your negative and your positive that's just 24 volts DC negative and 24 volt DC positive. But if either of those are missing, it doesn't matter what you're talking to, that communication will drop out. In the function of it all, it does need all four. But if you're having issue with your uh, communication, to look at a meter I've put on here, so you might wanna take a screenshot of this slide just so you have a reference back to which terminal is supposed to have what type of voltage on it. So you set your meter to your, uh, your voltage setting for DC which is the one that has the capital V and the straight line with the dashed line beside it. If you see a capital V with the squiggly line, that is AC. So remember we have to set for DC for all of these. So that's that one with the straight line. You'll put your black meter lead on the negative terminal and you'll put your, uh, your red meter lead on the positive terminal. Also, when you're wiring this up, I recommend using the same wire color code for every single job, every single device you put in. And I have those here. So your negative, you'll use the black conductor. Your positive, you'll use the red conductor. Uh, your A, use the yellow or white conductor. And your B, use the green conductor. If you always do it that exact same way, that should help get rid of a lot of potential communication problems you can have along the way. But going back to the meter, so you take your black meter lead to the negative and your red meter lead to the positive, and you should see about 24 volts going across those two terminals. So then you're gonna move your meter leads and you're gonna put your red meter lead on A and your black meter lead on B. And you should see somewhere in between two and five volts DC. It, it kind of varies depending on how many devices are on the circuit. But if it's as long as it's above two volts, you've got enough signal strength there. If you dip below that, then that's one of the reasons we use the RPS 1000 and the 5895 power supplies. They have an S bus repeater built in and what it does is it repowers the S bus. It, it, it gives it more juice. So it pulls that voltage back up into that operating range. When it starts getting too weak, it's kind of like when your cell phone signal gets too weak, the, the communication starts dropping out. So that's how you use your, uh, your meter to check this. Again, it's that on your negative and positive, you're looking for 24 volts. And across your A and B, you're looking for somewhere between two and five volts. Anywhere in that range is acceptable. It can be higher you know, up towards the five volt into the range, that's excellent. If it's down towards the two volt, that should be fine still. If it starts dipping, dipping below that two volt, it's probably a good idea to get one of those other power supplies so we can refresh the signal. And they do also make an S bus repeater that is just, it's not part of a power supply. It's an individual part that we can put out there for, uh, it helps with long S bus runs in a giant facility kind of thing. I put one more note down here. Do not use the positive and negative on this for auxiliary power. Don't use it for door holders. Don't use it for your sprinkler bell. Don't use it to power a cellular dialer that runs off of 24 volts. I know these silent night panels don't have a dedicated auxiliary power on them. So it can be really tempting to just grab that off of your S bus terminals. It's not made for that and can cause communication problems. It can pull that, that voltage down and cause problems with your power supplies out in the field. So just, just don't do it. It's not meant for it. I have seen it done. I've seen people try to do it and try to get away with it. It's, it's not the right way to do it. Um, there are other ways we can accomplish whatever the task is that comes up. So if it comes to that, pick up the phone, call around, figure out what it is we need to do to address your specific issue, but do not use it for auxiliary power. All right, so this is how to wire S bus. And again, A always goes to A, B always goes to B, positive goes to positive, and negative goes to negative. So we go on to V bus. As I've already mentioned, this is a two wire class B circuit supervised with an end line resistor. I have here showing you it's a 15K end line resistor. So if you've lost the resistor, or for some reason you got a panel that someone has already robbed the resistor out of or something, that's the value you need is 15K ohm. You cannot T-tap it because you have to think about this the same way we think about speaker circuits and NAC circuits. That class B supervision means it's, it's supervised by the straight through path and no T-tapping is allowed on those type of circuits. I've already talked about how this carries the audio message from to each amplifier or from the microphones to the amplifiers. Again, remember, if you've got a remote microphone on the job, make sure you pull from your panel 
over to your microphone and then from your microphone to the amplifiers. If, if you do it in any other order, it doesn't work right and it doesn't supervise it right. So it needs to go from your panel to the microphone to the amplifiers. Um, hey, Keith. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Hey, what's going on? Hey, mine actually worked. Did it work? That's excellent. Okay. <laughs> so what we good. did... What we did with Ramsey on a job recently is we had an issue where we had one wire with the V-Bus going to a microphone from the panel, and then we went from the panel to other amplifiers. And so to try to avoid pulling extra wire, we actually used the V-Bus out from the microphone at the enunciator. We pulled it to the V-Bus in of the fire alarm control panel, and then went from the V-Bus out on that fire alarm control panel to all the amplifiers. So it still hit both microphones, the one at the enunciator and the one at the panel, and then from there it went to the amplifiers. And by keeping it in the order where microphones all come first and amplifiers all come last, that did work. So that, thank you for that feedback, Ramsey. That was really good. I'm glad to know that that works. So if you look over at the wiring diagram on the right-hand side, by the way, both these wiring diagrams you've seen today, the one on the last slide and the one on this one, are pictures I took straight out of Silent Night's manuals. Um, we see up towards the top right hand of this diagram, it's called an EVS VCM. This is a part that comes in the uh, the voice the voice panels. You know, if you get like the 6820 EVS, uh, it'll have this below the motherboard on it. This is the voice control module. So that wire is coming out of those top two terminals there. That is your VBUS out, positive and negative. And again, remember, this is only a two conductor circuit. So we just have that VBUS out, positive and negative. And it comes down and it hits our first amplifier on the VBUS in, comes out of that amplifier on the VBUS out, hits the next amplifier. And right there, we see one of two things can happen. Either you keep continuing to daisy chain from amp to amp, or at the very last one, that's where you put your resistor. And again, there's no communication. So just because you have VBUS to each amp, you have no control over each circuit and you have no any other communication. It's not supervising for any other troubles. This is just how the audio message is transported around your fire alarm system. So directly below these on these amplifiers, you can see there are SBUS terminals. There's four more screws that this diagram is not showing anything landed on. You will have to pull SBUS to each amplifier, to each enunciator, to each microphone because that's how the, the intelligent control happens is over SBUS. The VBUS is just an audio message. And so on each of these slides, I've also shown the picture of what kind of wire you need. So for VBUS, I put the, the yellow conduct or the, the yellow jacket on a shielded two conductor wire here. So you can see the VBUS is the same wire we use for our speaker circuits. And I'll go back real quick to the SBUS slide. Again, I put the white jacketed four conductor here. That's the wire we use for SBUS. Sometimes these wires might have to be red or red with a yellow stripe or something something else, you know, if an engineer specs a specific wire color because they want to micromanage the wire colors in the ceiling. But whenever we get the choice, these are the wire colors that we prefer just to help keep, a, keep it all straight in our own panels. Now, the last part I have that I want to talk about is binary addressing. So this is dip switch addressing, whether it's Hochiki, Silent Night panels, different SBUS modules, um, Gamewell panels, like I said, I believe notifier panels are the same way. This is uh, an addressing scheme you'll see across brands all around the industry, and they all work off this same principle. Each switch has an assigned value to it. So you have switches one through six on this diagram here, and they'll all follow this same pattern, but some of them might have seven or eight switches. So with switches one through six, we have switch number one has a value of one. Switch number two has a value of two. Switch number three has a value of four. Now I'm going to stop with that. I'm not going to worry about the other three switches yet because I want to walk you through how to address up to address four. So looking over at our diagram on the right-hand side, if we want the address to be one, we turn on switch one because that has a value of one. And then address two, you turn on switch two. It has a value of two. And I think that's pretty straightforward. The part that might throw you is when we get to the address value of three. So if this is going to be panel number three on my SBUS circuit, then the way I get that is I turn on switches one and two because one plus two equals three. And then if I want address four, then I turn on switch number three because switch three has a value of four. And then to get five, you add one and four and six is two and four. And then seven is one, two and four. So you can see how that works on this side over here. 
So I hope that that makes sense to people. I hope you're able to follow. I know some of you who have been around doing this for a while, you'll already know this. Um, if some of you are a little bit newer and maybe you haven't had someone to explain it to you, that's how it works. That's the basic principle. What happens is with every switch, the value of it just doubles. So one is one, two is two, but three is four, then it's eight, 16, and 32. If there's a switch seven, that one is value 64. And it's always the same, no matter what brand it is. This is the way, this is just a universal constant in the fire alarm world and security world. When you get into security and access, it uses a lot of this stuff too. Um, so this chart that you see right here, this isn't a silent night specific chart. This is a chart that works for every brand. So if y'all want to, y'all want to save this so that anytime you you ever find yourself working on something that needs dip switch addressing, this chart will be how you get to it. Now that's kind of all I had to say about S bus, V bus, and this addressing sequence. But before we went any further with any kind of S bus power supplies or amplifiers in our silent night panels, I wanted to make sure we had this as a solid understanding before we try to move on. And if you're confused about this, the other things might just get more confusing. But if you understand this well, then it'll, it'll make understanding the next parts that much easier. So if y'all have any questions about any of these different things, how they work together, what makes them different, we've got some extra time. So kind of the opposite of last week. Last week, I ran y'all way over, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, this week, we can hang out and answer any questions you have. Or uh, if there's no questions, y'all are, are free to go. All right, well, it's been about a minute, so I'm going to guess there's no questions. Uh, again, thank y'all for being here. Um, y'all have a good week. Stay safe. And... Uh, I'm always open to feedback on these. So if you think I'm not hitting something well enough or not explaining something well enough, let me know and I'll try to revisit it and, and maybe approach it from a different angle. Anyways, uh, thanks for being here.